Sean Sport in podcast form. It was a big week of footy over the weekend. Of course, the round, uh, the AFL home and away season wrapped up, Nathan. We yes. got to see that Nick Natanui, Shannon Hearn oh. and um, Luke Shuey finished up on Saturday night when they got beaten by the Adelaide Crows. I really do love seeing that. Just the crowd get behind them. I love their kids doing somersaults at the end. Luke Shuey did one. Yeah, yeah, it was fa- <laughs> fantastic. Luke Shuey kicked the goal in the opening couple of minutes and the crowd went bonkers, I which tell is you great what, news. I bet, you, I bet you they're glad that Nick Natanui wasn't playing because they didn't have to carry him. Oh, my God. Because oh, he would be that one of the hardest to carry, wouldn't he? He's very heavy at the moment. Yes, uh, at I'm, the moment. I'm not saying, you know, in footy terms, you can be as fit as fiddle. But so, they, what you're they saying is you he, carry... so you're saying his body retired a while back? We're only finding out about it now. <laughs> no, he can be a heavy, thick guy at the moment. But it, until you're doing the running where you just drop all those KGs, it's very difficult. Yeah. But uh, um, I was surprised that Nick wasn't wearing, and a lot of people were t- talking yeah. to me about this, he was just wearing a shirt. He wasn't wearing an Eagles now, um, shirt at all. He's still contracted to them. Yeah, but is that because he wasn't playing? Did you think maybe he thought it was weird because he wasn't playing? If you're at the Frio... Do- oh, in in my experience, hoodie, in my experience, if you're not playing and you're an AFL player and you're at the game, you have to be wearing your uh, suit would be the one thing. But or a polo at the very least. already announced your retirement and you're not playing. Does, is that different? Because you've basically Well, I didn't quit. see it that way, but yeah. You, know, you could make a point that that was probably the reason. Well, I'm going to make that point. Okay, I'll take that on board. How's that? <laughs> It was a diff- it was disappointing end that all- although you knew that Adelaide were um, going to be the better team on the night, to see that Tex Walker, their full forward, kicked mm. nine goals. Now, he's kicked 19 goals against the West Coast Eagles in two games. <laughs> Charlie Kerno, who won the Coleman medal, kicked 19 goals against the Eagles in two games. This is Wouldn't they just be frothing at the bit if they got to play the West Coast Eagles this season more than a couple of times. We would have seen someone kicked 100 goals this season. Wow. Hasn't happened in a long time. That's crazy. We well, you know what I love about this is Harry was just, um, uh, Sean was just telling that fact to Harry because he knows it's not that big to me. <laughs> <laughs> His eyes weren't even looking at me. He was talking directly to Harry. And Harry was like... Do you need some help? <laughs> Harry was like, oh, yeah, I was trying to feign interest. <laughs> Poor old Adelaide, they were in the fight for the top eight other than that goal going against them last week by the goal umpire. Over the weekend, Nathan, we talked about this last yes. week, the fact that that goal was over the line. That was so, like, that was that did not hit, yeah, that it, post. No, it didn't. So on the weekend, any chance there was a goal within a metre of the line, they went upstairs and they reviewed it. It was pathetic that the umpires have lost all confidence yeah. in calling the decision on the spot. And I know the AFL would have been in their thing, we cannot have this happen again. Yeah, No way in the world. You review everything. But I think there's a point where it just goes a bit like, I slow yeah. the game. Mate, it, it's a point. We but can then, all see that. that. But Move then, on. But then if you go, what if you go past something that you didn't review like they did last time and then it happens again? So this, oh, yeah. And then everyone's up in their arms. So, the stake. so it's, uh, I understand them being overly cautious, but you're right. How, how long's the game now? Does that make it four hours? Yeah, it does. It's, it's getting <laughs> over uh, like American NFL. Uh, the other thing that was Fremantle played their last game. They beat Hawthorne. They played particularly well, actually. And they finished off the season really well, but they'd done the damage earlier on. Yeah. You know, they just had that period in the middle part of the year where they were horrendous and they lost all chance of playing in the finals. Finals happened yesterday for a lot of teams in the junior football. So congratulations to all those who've moved through. I want to mention my daughter's team who will play in a grand final. Yeah, it's so huge, Sunny, Sunny was so pumped. It was, it, yeah, it's, 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 I still, I'm so passionate about watching the girls get out there and play. It's such a sport that's grown overnight in the last couple of seasons. Well, I think everyone knows several little girls that are in um, an AFL team. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, football. uh, Yeah, they're they're all playing. Yeah, they all are. Yeah. Yeah. And it's... um, it's just it's just got them all in there playing. So Sonny's team's now playing in grand final next week. And I mentioned to you this morning, Nathan, Helen, our original news yes, reader here, her Carlton. daughter, uh, Chloe, is playing in one. Her team won yeah. through over the weekend as well. My team played an elimination final. We were able to get through that game. Then there was a final after us, which got really heated as well. There's a lot on the line when they get to it. Yeah. I didn't stop screaming on the sidelines. You okay. get so emotionally invested. Now, when you scream a lot of the times afterwards, there's some ramifications from the football board. Yes. Um, did we skirt the line? Yeah, I was up and down. I was kind of thinking, <laughs> but I kind of thought, I know where the line is. I'm going to go. Ro- I'm going to be all over the line, but hopefully not step over it. I'm going to look at the line. I'm just going to blur it a bit with my feet. <laughs> <laughs> so I am clear to coach next week, uh, which will be very interesting. But yeah, congratulations to all those teams who have started finals and certainly those who are playing in um, grand finals coming up. Um, good work by all the coaches and all the kids who are having fun at this point of the year. 
Well, now that the AFL season is done and dusted, it means the draft order for next season comes out. The interesting thing uh, about the weekend's play, because the Eagles had won um, the previous week, oh, and everyone's saying, yep, oh, they gave do. up the chance yes. to get the number one draft pick because they won their game. So that squashes the tanking mm-hmm. Yes. Well, does it? Yes, it does. Well, it does, Nath, because they won. So they, as of the previous week, yep. um, they were sitting in second last position. And um, Adam Simpson at his press conference going, I oh, see, I told you, we weren't tanking, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. North Melbourne mm-hmm. were number one. Well, North Melbourne beat the Gold Coast on the weekend. So that meant they went above the West Coast mm-hmm. Eagles, who now get the wooden so, spoon so and do finish last. Oh, so finish now last. they do finish. Oh, yes. so, yeah. so could they? Oh, no, because they had to wait to see someone else had won a game. So that yes. couldn't be stri- it was all up yeah. the strategy. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least they got it and then they can put the tanking rooms to rest and 100%. they get the wooden spoon. 100%. That's they a got, bargain. They've got two wooden spoons, which yeah. is great for a salad night at a yes. barbecue. They've got yeah. both of them. I don't have yeah. salad tongs. Don't you? Yeah, I've said it. <laughs> It needed to be said. I, I haven't said it for 20 years. <laughs> Our assistant Priya just nearly fell over. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> she just, like, I literally just hit the deck. <laughs> I think it's important to have salad tongs. No, I don't. I, yeah, I don't. I've what never do had. What do you do to do the salad then? What do you I get just a use like, spoons, just, No, I just use like normal barbecue normal. tongs. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's cool. right. That's yeah, cool. but like, not like, you know, like, you know, you know, the, you know, the ones where you have like one in each hand. They're nice, pretty fancy. Like salad You'd spoons, have all the salad tongs, servers. Yeah. Tell the service. Yeah. So the anyway. West Coast Eagles now have the number one pick, <laughs> yes. and they will be getting the best player available, which is Harley Reid. And, and but they've also said there's a stat out at the moment that three players, three or four players since 1987, hmm. the number one picks, only three or four duds. of them have uh, been premiership players. So the rest so of them duds. Yes, yeah, so, and then they're saying duds that they've said they've never won a premiership mm. okay. in that amount of time, which is which is quite incredible. Yeah. But the West Coast Eagles do have the number one pick, and they've got some pretty good picks after that. So they've got 19, 35, 38, and you would expect all those, the first four, to be really good. Here's the interesting one from a draft perspective. Melbourne Football Club have finished second this year, right up the top. Okay. When you finish second, obviously, the higher you're up, you get yeah. the, the crappier picks. Yeah, you're in slops territory. Aren't yes, you? but they had... They had traded a couple of players in the last couple of seasons, in particular Luke Jackson from the Dockers. So despite them finishing second, they have got the best picks. They have got this season number five, which they're going to get a great player. Number 15, which they're going to get a great player. Number 24, number and 34. So they got the best picks out of any of the teams I can see here going forward. And they finished second. How did they do that? Because they lost... They traded so Luke Jackson to the doctors. They just uh, the doctors, the dockers, <laughs> and Freo gave up a lot. They gave up their pick number five to Melbourne. There you go. So was Luke Jackson worth it? He's been pretty bloody good this year. Okay, mm-hmm. great. And going forward, you would think he's going to be excellent. But that team there, finishing second, they're just going to be strengthened mm. even further going forward. So they've done a particularly good job. Wow. Wow, they'd be good at online shopping if they can get yeah. a bargain like that. Yes, you know what I mean? Know. You know, there's people yes, that go, oh, I've got a flight to Bali for $100. How? How? I've never seen <laughs> Tell that. us. I don't get it. I know there's people. You. My auntie does it all the time in the yeah. gym. There's people no, that go on. They search. They search. They've got the but time how? to search. What do you mean? I think they have but alerts. They put alerts, alerts on their on computer, on their phones. Alerts. Emails. Emails. You know. Jeez. So that was a sports report that moved. <laughs> Morphed into a flights to Bali. Yeah. yeah, and of course, with a, a to stop at Salad Tong City on the way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is not sports sport. I don't know what you're talking about. Sean Sport is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.